Hi all, in this one, let's take a look at understanding the motivation, graphically speaking, for directional derivatives. I know it sounds like a scary phrase, but once you see it, you will realize the concepts are relatively simple. So first, I'm going to draw an axis this way. This is my z-axis, this is my x-axis, and this is my y-axis. So remember, I'm assuming because you're interested in this, that you're somewhat comfortable with depicting three-dimensional space in two dimensions on a flat piece of paper. Okay, so here in this context, this is often called the following. X-axis, Y-axis, and then this is the Z-axis. Let's just focus now on labeling things in a somewhat even way. So what I mean by that is, remember the horizontal axis is the Y-axis. So let's say I choose this to be 1. Then I want to just make sure I follow that spacing. It doesn't have to be perfect, so that's 2, and that's 3. And notice the way I'm arranging my tick marks so that they're parallel to the x-axis. That's proper perspective. <laughs> okay, so that's four. That's enough. Now let's just do this again on the x-axis also. So we want to make sure that spacing is as consistent as possible. Can I measure this somehow? Well, I've got this ruler here. Maybe it'll allow me to measure. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. About seven of those spaces. So I'm just going to do that one time here. Let's see here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's about here. Eh, that's a rough idea. About here. Okay. So I can put the ruler away. So let's see. I'll just roughly put this here. Okay. So this is 1. Okay. Mark off another. That's 2. And then roughly say 3 along the positive x-axis. We also have to repeat this as follows. I want to have a grid on the bottom because grids allow me to mark points with more confidence, but I'll get to that. Next, what I want to do is draw some kind of surface in here. Well, we are free to do whatever we want, so what I will do is I'm going to roughly sketch f of x comma y equals x squared plus y squared. That's our function. So that roughly looks like this, just like that. A portion goes up this way. Okay, then it goes this way, and then there's rounded over here, roughly speaking. So this is x squared plus y squared in the first octant of three-dimensional space. So the next goal might be this one. Imagine we are on the surface at some point. So for example, let's see here. I have to be really careful, make sure everything is arranged just so. So I'm going to draw this in here. Okay, so that looks like that, that looks like this, and then this goes this way, and then this goes this way. So I want that because then I can mark my points more easily. And now, imagine that the following holds. Let me draw up to the surface. I am at this point. And what I want to do is travel, for example, to this point. Let's do that in a different color. So this point here, like that. So I'm going to travel on the surface from the green to the blue. Let's make this and then ask a basic question and answer it. What's the rate of change? That's a big question of Calc, as you might know. So let's go through this. I might draw, first of all, perpendiculars to this point right here, and then from this one to this point. Those are my perpendiculars. And here, at the next point over here, I'm gonna draw a line segment between them, like this. Take a look. Why would I do that? Because that will be the same as this one here. And up here, take a look. I can complete a triangle. See this? I can complete a triangle it's a rough triangle, but it's a triangle. You see this? It's a triangle. And then from this perspective, you have to remember that that triangle is really a right triangle. It may not seem like it, but it is. It's because of our particular perspective looking at it. And the angle that is a right angle would be this one right here. Let me draw that in. This one right here. That's a right angle. It's just, it just doesn't look like it because of our particular perspective. So what we have basically is a triangle. And now this quantity here, as you might be able to guess, this would be your delta f. It's just a change in the value of the function. And let's review the concept of slope now. So, so what is slope? Well, slope in its rudimentary and first definition often is, in this context, delta f, which is just a change in the values of the function, divided by s. Now what is s? Let's define s. I'm going to define s as simply the length of this segment right here. This is s. So delta f divided by s is the slope. Now take a look because that s is in this position. When you shadow straight down here, 
that's also equal to s in value so that means here this is also s let me zoom in on this this is also s now the value of the function that can be found pretty easily at each point right you simply plug in the points and then you get a number out how do you find the length s you need that because in our basic slope definition delta f over s we need s so what you do is you make some observations look down to the xy plane and you observe that this point right here this is the point with coordinates 1 comma 1 and this point is the point with coordinates 2 comma 2 which means you can <laughs> use the Pythagorean theorem this is the right angle even though it doesn't look like it's because the triangle is tilted and lying in the xy plane and we're looking at it from an angle so that means that this is 1 and this is also 1 you can tell that for example because like this one is equal to just the two here minus the one that's a one and two minus one on that side that's this one over here so we're getting close in our slope formula we have delta f over s let's work this out actually so what's our delta f here we have to find the value of the function at each point so again remember we're using x squared plus y squared which means over here at the green point the value of the function would be f of 1 1 so I'm plugging 1 1 in it's gonna give me 1 squared plus 1 squared which is 2 that's the value of the function that's how high you're above the xy plane over here the value of the function that would be well f of 2 2 let's work that out plug it in it's gonna give you 2 squared plus 2 squared which is 8 so that means you're 8 units above the xy plane that's what it means which means that delta f, which is defined as the difference of those two, would simply be 8. I think you can see that. So 8 minus 2, which is 6. So I know delta f now. That means over here I can write 6 in the top. I need the length s. So again, I'm going to find that with the Pythagorean theorem. Look down to the xy plane in a triangle. And to find the length s... I'm going to have the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is just the square root of 2. That's the length of that leg. And now, just to remember that since this is the root of 2, this green S up here is also the root of 2. Let me label that and emphasize this fact that this is also equal to the square root of 2 up here, which means that the slope is equal to 6 over the root of 2. If you rationalize and simplify, it's going to give you 3 root 2. That's the value of the slope. Now, you should remember that this is an average slope. And the reason that it's average is that you're going between two points, the green and the black, and they're separated on the surface. So this slope represents the slope of this line, of this red line right here. That's the slope of that line, which we got from doing the yellow leg divided by the green leg which is how you find slope always for a triangle vertical over a horizontal but here let's be clear when you say horizontal what we mean is that this leg here is parallel to the xy plane down below that's what we mean by horizontal in this context so that's our slope and as you can imagine even though i've shown you using only the green and the black point here only two specific points this is a general concept that can be applied to pretty much any two points. So what I mean by that is you can repeat this if you wanted to over here. Imagine I choose some other point here and then I choose for example some other point here and I might ask, ask a simple question what's the rate of change from the green to the blue? Right, you would have a leg this way and then a leg up and that line this would be the right triangle that would be the right corner right there and here you would simply do this delta f divided by this s using the same reasoning as in the previous case and that would then tell you the slope of this yellow thing that i've just traced that would be the slope of that little line as you go from the green to the black point along the surface project the horizontal leg down to the xy plane find its length if you can and then simply find you know what point this corresponds to and then what point this corresponds to because you need to know the values of the function. Well, it looks like this black point is the same as this black point, but the green point here would be different from this green point. So these are some of the things to be considered. But the general concept is that I've shown you here. And this value, like the delta F over the S, this suggests 
that we need something that will tell you the slope when you go from one point to another on the surface and the direction can change. So what I mean to be precise is whatever slope we get here, this slope will likely be different from the slope that we got for our fully worked example. And here specifically look down an XY plane. When you go from the point 1 comma 1 to the point 2 comma 2, that's a specific direction along that specific little line segment. Whereas for the other one, if I just do take the time to project down a little bit, just to estimate, so maybe that projects down to here, this projects down to here, roughly speaking. You see that in this case, this might be, let me draw that in here roughly, and this would be another value, so maybe like this is 2.4, I say this is 3.3. The point is <laughs> that here this would be different because you'd be going in a different direction. So in other words, you'd be going along that. Clearly this direction here is different from this direction here. Like this one is going off the page on a diagonal, this one in basically like the opposite direction, right? So that's why these derivatives or rates of change along the surface are called directional derivatives because the slope that you get here is one value and it's this one particular direction. This slope is, for example, a different value and you're going in a different direction along the surface. So these are some of the major ideas. Please do remember that in my case, I'm showing you average rates of change. In real life, in calculus, what you have to do is let that S shrink to zero. So you can find the instantaneous rate of change. Same thing over here. If we call this S, then to find the instantaneous rate of change at this point, you would have to let this S shrink to zero. And then it would give you the instantaneous rate of change at that point. Just like here, if you let, say, this point move towards that one, you're going to shrink S to zero, which means you're going to find the instantaneous rate of change at this point. Exactly. But this is uh, first, these are first steps in that direction. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's been helpful. Please leave a like. It all makes a difference. I'll see you in another math video. I love this stuff. <laughs>